I was asked a really great question by a new member of CSS Made Easy, which was, can this course help me customize a recipe card plugin? And the answer is yes. The, the thing is that you need to be aware of when you're working with things like recipe plugins or, or really anything where you don't control the styling directly, there are gonna be some limitations. But what I wanna do in this video is show you how we can customize a recipe card plugin and get it a heck of a lot closer to the provided example with just CSS and no adjustments to any kind of HTML or any other code. So here is the starting point that we have for this particular recipe card. You can see there's some obvious problems. These links are a really dark color and that's kind coming from the theme styles, but the plugin here doesn't pick that up properly. So these links are just kind of faded into the background and have poor contrast. The other thing is this doesn't look like the example that our, our uh, you know, member that shared this actually wants this to look like. And what that looks like is more like this. It's a heck of a lot more clean, just easy to read. And there's some really prominent call outs like our prep time and our cook time. Those things are all just right there, really visible for us. So as I said, there are gonna be some things that we're not quite able to do. For instance, these three share and print buttons right here. Those are actually in a completely different part of the HTML DOM of this particular section. So let's take a look at that. We have a header. If I click on this, there's a little header for this particular recipe card. And then below that is actually where the body content lives. And inside of that is these buttons. So you could technically take CSS and, you know, kind of fake its way up into that header. But because of the fact that we can't actually edit the HTML of this particular plugin, easily anyway, I should add, that we really aren't going to want to, to do that. We're going to heavily adjust the, you know, the visual structure as opposed to the actual HTML DOM that has accessibility implications, just really not a good idea. So there are going to be some things that we're limited to do, but we can make this look a heck of a lot more like the provided example. So what we're going to do is use our inspect tool here. You can just right click on any page and go to inspect. And what I'm gonna do is first of all, click on this header. Now, what I'm noticing with this particular plugin, I'm not exactly sure which one it is, but there is a lot of situations where we have an inline style. Now that makes it more difficult to override because that's gonna take precedent over you know, other CSS that you might add depending on the selector. Um, there's a lot to unpack in that, but inline styles are not really ideal in most cases, unless you know for a fact that's exactly what you want it to be uh, kind of overriding. It has one of the highest specificities. So what that means for us is that it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to customize this. Now, I actually don't have access to this particular site. So when we add the CSS, it's just gonna be here in our Chrome inspect, but typically I would want to add this in something like WP Codebox or in you know, some kind of other code plugin so that it actually lives and remains. If I refresh the page as we make these changes, then they're all gone. So hopefully that doesn't happen. The other thing with this inline style is that I also have this background of this lime green color. So I not only have an inline style, but I also have an important tag here. And the important is gonna add another layer of specificity um, that just, these two things are just really not necessary. I actually imagine that they did this because there's a few different styles you can pick for this particular recipe plugin. So there may just be a case where, you know, they need to make sure that it overrides. But really what we wanna do is just get rid of that. Um, we can take a look at the, structure inside of this. And fortunately, we can actually rearrange these elements because of the fact that these are set up in a fairly, you know, ideal way. We have just a couple elements here. So we have a div that contains our featured image there. We have our H2 for the title. We have a horizontal rule. And then we also have another div that contains the callouts for author, time, and yield, those sorts of things. So what I'm going to do in this particular case is on this header, I am going to write this here just directly in, as an inline style um, this is probably what you would have to do to make sure that this, this uh, change lasts for you long term. But I'm going to change this to a display of flex. And then immediately we have some problems. So obviously there's some layout issues here with things that are not necessarily taking up the right amount of space. So what I want to do here is I also want to set a flex wrap of wrap. So that way our content can fit. And then that will give us the ability to set, you know, maybe this text is gonna have the left 60%, and then the image is gonna have maybe the right 40%, and then this kind of call out box right here can be 100% width, and then it's still, you know, it's on its own line. So that's why we need that flex wrap parameter. So next up for this particular div with the image, let's go ahead and set this to a width of something like maybe 58%, and I'll show you why I'm gonna do that in a little bit. The other thing is that we also have a transform here, which is why this element is floating up kind of in line with that top border. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of that. It's gonna be a little bit messy here for just a minute, but don't worry, it's gonna to start to come together. 
The next thing I want to do is on this H2, we're going to set this element style. And in fact, I set the uh, width here on the image to 58%. I meant something more like 38%. And then this H2 is going to be a width of something like 58%. This one as well, instead of using a translate, this one has margin top of negative 115. So we're gonna undo that. The way that you would actually do this in CSS, because you can't just click this in this particular case, is I would go with the margin top of zero, and that will also work as well. Or you can even go margin unset. That's another option. Then the next thing is we actually don't really need this horizontal rule. So what you would do is probably just go with something like display and none, and that's gonna get it out of our organization here. Then on this particular case, for this section, this tasty recipe details, we're gonna set this to a width of 100%. It basically already takes up all the other width because there's nothing there for it, but we're gonna to wanna to do that, make sure the width is 100%, because we're gonna change the padding in just a little bit. So now what we need to do is actually rearrange these elements. So of course, in our example, the text comes first, and then the image. So what we can do is actually use the flex order parameter. If you recall on this header, we set a display of flex. And then what I can do is on this div with the image, I can say order of two. Then I can set on this particular heading, I can say order of one. And then on this div down here, I can go order of three. And just like that, we have much closer to what we're actually after. We have the text first, image on the right, then we have the uh, the section down below. So with this image, we would probably want to change this width to something like maybe 250 pixels. We could do that. And then we probably don't want this border either because we don't have a border color in the example from before. Uh, what I want to do is go ahead and change this background color so we can actually see this a bit better. And to do that, we're going to need to change this text color as well. So for this, the color, let's just set this to black for now and we can always change it later. And then the other thing is, again, with these inline styles, the way that this plugin is set up, there's a bunch of white text color settings here that are set using these important tags. Then there's a fallback class that has this kind of off white color. So in this case, let's just make it black so we can actually see it. We're gonna have to do this, unfortunately, a bunch of times. Um, however, if we were doing this properly with you know actually writing the CSS for real, we could overwrite this class once and then it would apply to all three of these other ones. We still though have to unset this color of important though. So just kind of a frustrating example where you're gonna have to fight with this for a little bit, but as you can see, we're, we're definitely making progress. The other thing is we also have these icons. These icons are SVGs with a fill color also set to important like that. So just more fighting here. And this isn't, you know, again, I'm not actually writing this CSS. I'm just unsetting it essentially. So now what I can do is in my header, I can just take off this background color and it's starting to look more like the example. So we're definitely making progress. Now what I want to do is go ahead and set the background color on this particular div here. So it is right here. And let's go figure out what that color actually is. If I inspect this section here, we have this background color of a 123852. So I can just pop that in and go background, stick that in. And then for our color, we could set as white. But we have other colors that are overriding this stuff. So there's a class here with black. So maybe we would change these to white. And there we go. So that's starting to look a bit better. Then unfortunately, we have this text not really readable. And those also have an important tag. So see, it's just like in some cases with these plugins, you're just gonna have to fight a little bit. Uh, let's make sure there's nothing else inside of this section that we can't see. Looking pretty good here, uh, except we might wanna just set this to white as well. So you can actually see that. Okay, so that is starting to look a whole lot better. Now, obviously there is some padding on the left and right edges that we wanna get rid of. So on this header, we can take a look. There's padding on the left and right of 2.5 EM. So realistically, we could just uncheck that and it's already starting to look better. So the other thing that we could consider doing is on our header right here, we set this display flex, which allows us to use flex gap. So if I just write gap and say something like, I don't know, 1.5 rem, then I'm starting to get a little bit of a gap between my elements here and I don't have to rely on margin, which is awesome. That's exactly what I wanna do. The next thing is this heading. 
probably needs to be a bit bigger. Let's see, what is the font size set to? 2EM, probably something like 3EM. It's gonna be a little bit better. I mean, it's <laughs> it's big enough, it's taking up all the space. I think maybe 2.5 is gonna be more ideal. Um, oh, this one actually isn't that big. I was thinking the text size was bigger, but really it's just a, a far higher font weight. So this one is, um, where was it? I just saw it, 32 pixels. So it's gonna be two rem and then font weight of 800. So I could simply just go font weight of 800 and then the font size of two rem. It doesn't quite fit because of course there's just so much more here in this particular section. We don't have the reviews and we don't have these buttons. So that's a, that's a little bit of a tough one. Here's another example of this yield section. So of course, in, in our case, in the example, the yield is right here, but on our site, the yield is over here. So again, you, you technically could pull this out, but I would kind of advise against it in this particular case. Um, maybe there's a way in this plugin to add reviews, but I don't know exactly. So with this H2, I think because it doesn't take up so much space, you either could do one of two things. You could make that font size bigger, or if you recall, we changed the image size to 250 pixels. Maybe let's just undo that and let's go back to like 125 pixels. So that starts to look a fair bit better. Now the next thing is we also have this green border on the outside of our card here. So if we take a look at this border color, it's actually gonna end up being the same blue we already used from before. So this blue is right here. I'm gonna grab this. And what we'll do is just simply uncheck this border color. Then for our border color here, we'll stick that in. And then the other thing is that it has a border radius. So we can go border radius of 10 pixels. Now we get that nice rounded corner effect. Then next up we have these green buttons down here. So we just need to soften these up a bit and make them match the colors from the example on this side. So if we go ahead and click this, the color is not available. Oh, here it is, it's a, it's a variable color. So D7EBE5. So what I'm gonna do is just simply come over here to this particular A. And again, it's using inline important styles. I wish it wouldn't do that. I wonder if this class applies. Looks like maybe we could just undo this and then change it on the class. Background color like that. And then our color is, I presume, that blue from before. So then again, we would need to come in here to this and undo these. And then our, uh, let's see, our color is going to be the blue from here. Grab this one more time. Apply that to this class like that. And I guess I didn't uncheck the color here. There we go. And then the other thing I wanna do on this particular class is we're gonna say max width is going to be fit content. And then that way it only is going to take up as much space as it needs. And in fact, I'm not gonna put that on the A link. I'm gonna put it on this particular div. So we're gonna say max width will be fit content. And oh, I guess there's two separate divs here. So we're gonna do the same thing, max width fit content. So that means the button is only gonna take up as much space as it needs instead of being 100% width like we saw. So you can see this is looking a heck of a lot closer to this particular example. It's definitely there. The image actually is a whole lot bigger. So I think let's go ahead and redo what we've already done a couple times. You can see you're just gonna have to kind of play with this a bit. And then I think what I would do is on this H2, I might just make the font size a bit bigger and cheat that a little bit. And then, yeah, so the spacing is just kind of equaling these containers. Uh, looks like we have some margin coming from somewhere, which is why we have so much spacing on the bottom here. Let's go take a look at this div. We have a margin top of one EM, so that's gonna pull us in a bit. And then does this image div have some margin on the bottom? It sure does, so even more. So there we go, it's starting to kind of line up a bit better. Now in terms of alignment and you know the really small minutia of making sure that these are aligned, there's tons of ways to do that with flex and you know spacing and all kinds of other things. But you can see how much better this already looks. In terms of just replicating this layout, we've really achieved that particular goal. There's much more to do, you know, in terms of ingredients, like this particular heading, we would need to go ahead and style this H3 to more match, you know, this ingredient section. Um, 
Again, there's also just minor differences like this scale option that just looks a little bit different. These checkboxes can be a little bit tricky to, to style sometimes, especially as somebody that's new to CSS, but all of this stuff is possible. So, you know, in terms of where we're at, this is very, very close to this. So again, I added this all in the Chrome inspect version. So if I refresh, we're gonna lose everything. I would have done this in WP Codebox on this site for real, you know, if I had access to, to the backend here. But I wanted to quickly demonstrate what you can do in, what is this now, 15 minutes of writing some CSS. We've now made this recipe card plugin look much more like the intended target. And pretty much all of the CSS that I wrote is just a combination of, you know, simple selectors targeting the right thing. And really it's just a mass learning. So if this is something you're interested in, if you think that this might be a practical skill for you, definitely check out my CSS Made Easy course that's linked in the description below. For those of you that have already purchased it, I can't thank you enough. I really appreciate it. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys in the private CSS Made Easy group.